House of Dragon drew the largest audience in the history of HBO. Based on George R.R. R. Martin's fantasy novel, Fire and Blood, the series serves as a prequel to the critically acclaimed record-breaking TV series Game of Thrones. The show is set 300 years before the events of the 2011 TV series. The same stakes, the same power play, but with different players. Martin revealed that he's already seen all 10 of the series' episodes, and we're itching to know what he thinks. The author famously rejected the last season of Game of Thrones, as did most fans. What does George R.R. R. Martin have to say about House of Dragon? And how big of a part did he play in its production? Well, keep watching to find out. How did the House of Dragons premiere go? We're still reeling from the 2019 finale of GOT. Over the years, the Emmy darling gave us plot twists we never saw coming, storylines beyond our imagination, and character arcs that reverted everything we thought we knew about the show. The show became HBO's most popular series to date, generating over 18 million viewers per episode for its seventh and eighth seasons. The series premiere, however, opened up to a little under 5 million viewers. Heir of the Dragons, the first of 10 episodes for season one of House of Dragons, was watched by over 10 million viewers. The episode became HBO's most watched premiere to date, giving Martin two plaques from the network. Will House of Dragons become the most watched show on HBO and the most streamed one in HBO Max for 2022? Well, it'll have to outperform Sam Levinson's Euphoria. The show brought in close to 10 million viewers per episode for season two, but its opening premiere racked in approximately 2.4 million viewers. So House of Dragons already has one up against Euphoria. Will it surpass Levinson's production as the most watched show for 2022? Guess we'll find out. George R.R. R. Martin was instrumental in producing House of Dragons. Here's an interesting fact. HBO greenlit House of Dragons by giving it a straight to release order in October of 2019. Why is that a big deal? because networks typically like to explore their options when developing a series. They give the green light for a pilot episode and assess the show's overall success based on the pilot. In other words, HBO knew House of Dragons would be a colossal success. We have to give credit where credit is due. George R.R. R. Martin gave the world the brilliance that was Game of Thrones, and now, with Fire and Blood, he's giving us more than we could have hoped for. However, in 2019, Martin went on the record to state that he had no part in the finale of the critically acclaimed TV series. Did the showrunners really sideline the man behind the entire project? Well, not exactly. Every season is based on one or two of Martin's novels from the Game of Thrones franchise. The books come out in succession, some a year later, some two years later, and some even five years later. The last season, season eight, wasn't based on one of Martin's books because he hadn't released one yet. David Benioff and D.B. Weiss stated that they already knew what they wanted in the series finale and had a clear vision for the final season. Don't get us wrong, the final seasons had several highs, the Battle of the Bastards and the White Walkers making it the West Arrows after nine long years, but it wasn't for everyone. Many fans went online to express their displeasure over the finale, which, in their opinion, was anticlimactic and didn't serve the show justice. It was largely believed that the showrunners had shot themselves in the foot by sidelining Martin. Was Martin mad about it? Keep watching to find out. This time, however, the author had a bigger role to play. While there are some differences between Martin's novel and the show on screen, Martin co-created the show with Ryan Condal, who also served as the showrunner. Set 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones, the sequel come prequel tells the story of the decline of the Dragon Riders and how succession drove the Targaryens out of Westeros. You know what we're most excited to know more about? The Mad King's descent to, well, madness. Did you know George R.R. R. Martin wanted Game of Thrones to be 10 seasons long? Ahead of the August 21st premiere of House of Dragons, Martin sat down for an exclusive interview with the Wall Street Journal to talk about his upcoming show and the one that just wrapped up. Martin revealed that he had advocated for Game of Thrones to have been at least 10 seasons long. I was saying it needs to be 10 seasons at least and maybe 12, 13. I lost that one, he told the journal. The showrunners, however, revealed that they had already planned for an eight-season-long series and had mapped out the finale while they were still working on the third and fourth season. What would have happened had Game of Thrones been ten seasons long? Would there have been newer characters, more twists, or would it have meant that the showrunners followed Martin's novel for the finale, something we've dreamt of for the past three years? The House of Dragons that could have been. All right, we've talked about HBO's decision to give House of Dragons the green light and run it straight to screens without a pilot, but did you know that there was a version of the show that actually did shoot a pilot episode? Naomi Watts starred in the pilot episode for an abandoned concept. Martin talked about the concept with the Wall Street Journal and revealed that he wasn't too crazy about it either. But wait, concepts? As in more than one? Yup. Martin stated that there were altogether five different teams that pitched their versions of Fire and Blood to the author. The author had the discretion to pick which concept worked best for him and his work. This would ultimately be by Ryan Condal, who now serves as the show's showrunner. 
Martin also stated that besides inventing the Game of Thrones universe and the characters that lived inside of it, he didn't have much of a role in the 2019 series finale. He does, however, have a bigger role in House of Dragons. The series storyline will drive up all the way till Dance of Dragons, which is where our story picks up in Winterfell. Who will be starring in House of Dragons? Will there be any familiar faces? Unfortunately, the series takes place approximately 172 years before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen, at which point the series will wind up. We won't be seeing much of, or any of really, the characters in the original series, but the cast for House of Dragons is pretty amazing in itself. Leading cast members include Patty Considine, Matt Smith, Olivia Cook, Emma de Arcy, Steve Toussaint, Eve Best, Fabian Frankel, Sonoya Mizuno, and Ricey Fons. Toussaint is known for his role in Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and Shooting Dogs. The British actor of Barbadian descent will serve as one of the very few actors of color in the franchise's history. But instead of being celebrated, several trolls online mock Toussaint's casting as Lord Corliss Valerian, the richest seafarer in all of Westeros. One of the very first images from House of Dragons to go viral was actually a picture of the actor standing side by side with a mock-up of what his character would have looked like had the showrunners followed the book. Were there differences? Yes, of course there were, but none of the seasons from Game of Thrones were based entirely on the novels themselves, and it's important to understand that Martin had to give the go-ahead for casting. He chose Steve Toussaint himself. In all fairness, if the brains behind the whole kingdom of Westeros decides a black man should be playing the role of Lord Corliss Valarian, then why are people so pressed about it? The actor, however, has been pretty calm in spite of the racist attacks. He stated that people were more likely to believe in flying dragons than they were to believe a black man could be the richest guy in the GOT universe. Speaking of which, what did you think about Two Saints casting? Do you think the actor would do the character justice, or should the producers have gone with someone else? Let us know. How different is House of Dragons from Fire and Blood? Are you team, the book was better, or team, the series did it justice? In November of 2018, George R.R. R. Martin announced that if there were ever to be a sequel to Game of Thrones, he would want it to be based on Fire and Blood. A short while later, five teams came up to him in Santa Fe and pitched their versions of the book. Martin went with Condal's version. Why does that name sound familiar? Because Condal was the man behind one of the most epic episodes of the main series, The Battle of the Bastards. But again, House of Dragons isn't an exact depiction of Fire and Blood. Let's talk about some of the differences between the book and what made it to our screens. Fire and Blood is supposed to be a historical retelling of the House of Targaryen up till Dance of Dragons by the fictional Archmeister Gildane. Gildane gets most of his stories from several Meisters and Septons, plus a court jester named Mushroom. The events outlined in the book are therefore somewhat different based on which narrative the reader chooses to follow. For example, Mushroom claims things were a lot more extreme when the Dragon Riders ruled the kingdom, but the Meisters believed that they were simpler times. House of Dragons doesn't tell the story based on varying narratives. Instead, it focuses on one narrative. The interesting thing about that is that we don't know which narrative they're going with, which means that while Martin leaves fire and blood to the viewer's imagination, House of Dragons follows one concise storyline. And here's something that'll keep you at the edge of your seat. There will be new scenes in the show. A scene that wasn't in the book but made it in the show. Warning, spoilers ahead. We just talked about how the novel might be slightly different than the show. Let's elaborate on that with an actual scene from the first episode of House of Dragons that shows us just that. Two key events are taking place during the series premiere. The birth of King Viserys and Queen Aima's son and a tournament being held in honor of it. This is something that's mentioned in the book as well, but they're told as two separate stories. For better theatrical effect and probably to save millions fighting a battle scene, the producers juxtaposed Aima's delivery with the fight sequence. The whole scene is suspenseful because not only did Ama express that for a woman giving birth is like being in a battlefield, but we're also told that someone might die. With the scenes juxtaposed, we see two men fighting to the death and Ama barely holding on to life as she's giving birth to the king's heir. Only one person can make it. Who will it be? It's the crown prince. Queen Ama didn't make it through childbirth. We don't know about you, but that scene had us at the edge of our seats. George R.R. R. Martin calls House of Dragons magnificent. Ahead of the House of Dragons season premiere, George wrote a blog post expressing his thoughts on the show. The author had contracted COVID after a recent feature at San Diego Comic-Con and had been blogging while being in quarantine. Not only did Martin reveal that he had already seen all 10 of the series episodes, but that he believed it was magnificent work. We wish him the best of health and also wish House of Dragons will feature a second season. Maybe a third. We wouldn't be complaining. All right. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe for more fun and informative content you wouldn't get anywhere else. Trust us on that. And until next time, bye.